Here's a brief introduction to the so-called RipRap 3D printer. We begin here with some filament. The filament is inserted into the heating bed, into the extruder. This is the heating block which heats up the filament and the filament comes out of this small nozzle here. We have a few fans. This fan cools the filament when it comes off, and this fan cools the, the machinery, the heating element, when it cools off. We have stepper motors here and here, which drive it up and down. And then we also have stepper motors in the back and underneath to drive the deck back and forth, and also left and right. So that is with this arm here. So in that way, the stepper motors can drive this in three dimensions. Um, the deck here, our deck happens to be a heated deck. Um, the deck gets, gets warm and you can control that temperature. And that just helps the plastic adhere to the deck after it is, it is extruded. The brain for the operation is this motherboard here. And this is where all of the motors, the stepper motors, and the heating elements get inserted. What you will do is you will use a little SD card to put your, put your prints on it. And then you'll insert the print here. We find that that's a little cumbersome, especially when you have a bunch of 3D printers lined up. So what we use is this little guy here, a little adapter extender. And so this is for a, uh, an SD card to a micro SD card adapter. And this is how we do it. Just insert that guy. And then your card can come up here. And we'll use the adapter with the micro SD card to insert into the slot. Just makes it easier to, to reach and to get to. And while normally we use this adapter, this SD card adapter, to feed our prints into the machine, you can actually connect uh, this USB cable into the motherboard and then connect the USB end into your laptop. And through software, you can actually print um, with the computer connected. Um, that's nice if you if you have a dedicated computer or if you have um, a need to quickly and easily change the settings as it prints. But you can change the settings from the menu uh, here manually. Um, and I don't typically use this. Um, I don't typically use the, the cable. I don't have my computer connected typically because it means that my computer has to stay on and has to stay connected while the thing is printing. Something else that we've added are these nice LED strip lights here. And those simply plug into, rotate this around. Those are just uh, dummy lights. They just plug into the power supply here and uh, five volts uh, and ground can just light that up. It just makes it makes the workspace nice and bright so you can you can easily work on it. Something else we've added also is this little power strip. Most of these uh, knockoff riprap printers do not come with a power button. And so to turn them off means you usually just unplug them from the wall. But if you attach a little power strip here, you can just turn it off and on with that switch there, which is quite handy. Again, um, especially if you have a bunch of them lined up uh, like we do in our lab. Something else we've made for our lab is this nice little stand. And I say we, I mean Brian actually made this. Um, one of the teachers at George School made these nice stands for all of our 3D printers. It just makes it a, a standalone unit. It allows the filament to sit nicely on top. A little through hole here. It allows for the power strip to be connected. Everything's firm on there. And then the, the 3D printer just sits on top. Something else to consider is the type of filament that you use. And we've gone through all kinds of different vendors, but we, we like this one from 3D Salutech. 
Um, and I just want to call your attention to the fact that we are using PLA, which is a type of plastic. ABS is a different type. Um, but this machine can do PLA and ABS. We prefer the PLA for a lot of reasons. And the diameter of the filament is 1.75. Um, this is a clear, natural clear filament, and it usually comes in one kilogram spools like we have here. The nozzle is also something that's important to, to consider, and these are, these are replaceable. In fact, every single part of this is replaceable, which is, which is nice because you build it yourself, um, which means uh, it takes some time and some effort to do, um, a couple of hours, I guess. Uh, but it also means that if something breaks on it, you can you can fix it. So this is a replacement nozzle, and um, they typically come made uh, for the rip wraps. But the nozzle size, the little hole in the top, as you can see here, uh, focus. There you go. That little hole in the top is 0.4 millimeters, and you can you can get any size that you want but it's important to know what size you get. 0.4 works pretty well. It's a, it's a nice thin bead. And if you ever have to replace these because the, the ends get gunked up or the, the hole widens because of um, misuse or, or lots of use, then you, you'll just unscrew it down here in the bottom and just replace it with this one. Something else that you really have to understand before you begin printing is how big your deck is. So if we measure this deck with, with a ruler. We can see that it is, the bottom scale is in centimeters. So that's 22 centimeters, which is 220 millimeters. And if we look, to the, look left and right, it also is 220 millimeters. So this is a pretty standard size deck, 220 by 220 millimeters. So let me show you a few common commands, menu commands that we can use, that we often use here. Um, one is to put this at the home position. We have these little switches here, which tell it that we have, that the, that the, the head has reached its left and its bottom positions. Okay, and there's also one on the back, on the back for the bottom deck. And the way you do that is there's a series of five buttons, a little star shape here, cross shape. And the center button is the menu. So if I press the center button, go down to quick settings, and then go down to home all, and press the right button, which is like the inner button, then, then the, the head will quickly move to the home position which is far left and down and then the deck is all the way extra uh, pushed into the to the back and you can see in here the little switches are in place and it tells it right where it is and there you can see that the nozzle is just above the deck So I think easily the most important thing to do with these with these printers is to make sure that the nozzle is at the right height above the deck, and that's something that's that takes a lot of patience and a lot of practice to get right. So let me show you how that's done. Right now, the motor is engaged. We just sent it home, and I'm unable to to move it. It's the stepper motors are on, so I'm going to go back here to the menu. I'm going to scroll down to quick settings. Down close to the bottom is a, an item that says stepper disable or disable stepper. So I do that. You heard the steppers maybe turn off. And now I can easily move this around. And I can move this around. Sometimes that little cooling jet um, gets out of place, which is what happened there, so I can move it. And now we can take a look to see how close that is. So what we typically do is we use a business card to slide under there, or I've got a little feeler gauge like this, a little thin, thin sheet piece of, of, of metal, and if it slides under, you know, really thin, you can see that's a really thin blade there. 
if it slides under, then I am pretty much guaranteed that the that the nozzle is the right height. And I need to make sure that that's the case in all locations. So one thing I would make sure I do um, this maybe once a week, I guess. Uh, and again, it's it's quite aggravating sometimes, but I would make sure that the the nozzle is at the right height in lots of locations. I would test the front middle. I would slide it over here and test the, the far left. Do the same for the far right. You don't want to slide it too quickly because it will produce a back EMF into the motherboard. Nice little location there. If if uh, the deck is too high or too low, you just take a screwdriver and adjust these little screws there, tighten or loosen. Um, this, to tighten it, it will bring the deck down, which is farther away from the, from the nozzle, and these little springs here will push it away if you loosen it. And then I'll, I'll test along this side here, sliding the deck, and then it's just testing, you know, six or so uh, or sorry, nine locations across the across the platform. And then once everything looks like it's level, then you're ready to print, and it should stay that way if you don't abuse it uh, for quite some time. So the school has a bunch of these riprap printers. These are handmade um, uh, printers that are pretty inexpensive. Uh, we don't buy the proprietary ones anymore just because of the cost. Plus, with the handmade ones, um, you build them yourself, so therefore if something goes bad on them, and they often do, then you can replace them, the stepper motors or the power supply. Power supplies are usually the thing that go bad, uh, but sometimes the, the, the brain, the microcontroller, or the LCD screen will go bad, and you can replace those. It's kind of nice to be able to see all the moving parts and to put it together so yourself so that you can, you can replace it on the fly. But if you go to Amazon, for example, and do a search for Rip Wrap 3D Printer, uh, this is what pops up. And you can see a lot of them look like this, which is what we use at George School. And the price can vary from $150, $120 to $250. So uh, this is one here. Anything I would buy from a, these are all, these are from just companies all over the world. I would make sure that they have a pretty high rating and that a lot of people have looked at them and, and, and have used them and commented on it. So this doesn't look the same as this. This is missing a little, little monitor here, but my guess is it would behave in the same, in the same way. This is a very highly rated um, or very highly um, uh, viewed and, and purchased piece of machinery. Uh, it's not terribly expensive but it does not look the same as these riprap knockoffs. Okay. Again, look carefully at the, at the comments, and I would not buy it unless it had pretty high ratings. Uh, this is cheap, and sometimes you get what you pay for. But again, you can basically build this yourself. If you have 3D printers and laser cutters, um, you can buy all the parts yourself if anything breaks on it, or just, like I said, repurchase power supply or heating element or whatever. So there's these all look pretty much the same. They're all about the same cost. You know, even something like this has the same kind of format as what we use at George School.